What is up guys? Welcome back. As some of you already know, my name is Charles, MX Revival, MXRevival.com. And you know, I finally got around to pulling off the mobile moto trailer build shop tour, I guess you could call it. I have been thoroughly enjoying this thing for the past few months. It has literally served every purpose I need. It turned out way better than expected. And today we're going to go over what I have in here. What does my equipment look like? How did I build some of this stuff? This is actually episode four. I started with a raw eight and a half by 20 foot trailer. So if you want to watch episodes one, two, and three, I will go ahead and link the playlist in the description below. Started from scratch, basically came into the space with a roll of blue tape and taped out the floor and tried to envision what it would come out like. And it actually came out almost exactly like the way I had it laid out in my head, which was awesome. Then we went ahead and laid down some flooring. And episode three, we went ahead and took the walls off, roughed in the electrical, put up the white FRP. And so now here we are, we're in my mobile shop that literally has zero overhead. I pay nobody rent. I have no brick and mortar fees. If I decide I don't want to be here in California anymore, I'll rip this sucker into whatever state I feel like going to. The trailer was about 11 grand so break that up over 12 months and that's your monthly fee. Even if you finance this sucker your payments would be done in a year or two. So needless to say I am super pumped on it. It's clean. I literally have every single thing I need. I have no overhead. I'm filming all the YouTube videos in it. I'm able to build bikes from scratch to completion right in this very space and every time I come into the trailer I'm like wow dude you did it. You pulled it off so there is also a great sense of accomplishment. So today in this video we're just going to work our way around the shop. I'm going to show you what equipment I have in here. If you guys have any questions for me at all that are more technical that maybe I didn't cover, just ask below. I'll tell you everything I know. Thank you for joining me today. I'm pretty excited about this. So admittedly, yes, of course, at first I thought maybe this space would be too small. I was working in a full-size shop before or a, at least a 20 by 20 space. I think it was 20 by 25. And so the square footage, of course, shrank greatly but that's what the layout was all about i came into this space laid everything out and realized man you know i'm going to be able to do this not only that but because we had to move from where we were previously i didn't really have a choice it was either figure something out or go get tangled up with all the brick and mortar fees that are associated with regular buildings and what's really really interesting about being in here especially after a little while is that when i first started to come into the space to work you know every morning start my emails do that till about 10 roll out to the shop and get to work with the physical stuff every time I came in here it felt bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and so in the very beginning it felt a little constrained but definitely workable and nothing really like off-putting or offensive about it and now when I come in here I feel like I have a ton of room so it's really weird how you adjust to a space also so guys if you are thinking about doing something like this absolutely do it just follow your heart jump in go get your trailer or whatever it is you're trying to build your shop in just get it done especially right now today's mess we're in I don't think there's ever been a better time for something like this there are certainly no wrong answers so if it suits you seriously just go do it you will not regret it now we're about to jump into everything and I already told you you can ask me any questions below but I'm serious if it is about money involved with what I did electrical the flooring whatever it may be it doesn't matter I'm an open book if I can help you with with your project then I would absolutely love to thank you for joining me today and without further ado let's go ahead and start on the far left of the trailer and we'll check out the way I set things up over there and work our way around all right so everything in here I literally already owned I went ahead and made it fit in here in such a way that it had a workflow about it that I could maneuver well get to all my tools and drawers keep other things out of the way up on shelves and it just came out killer so of course every shop needs a little chemical cabinet I have a small husky cabinet that I've been toting around for about five years wherever we've ended up and this thing keeps all my pre-mix my my air filter cleaner, my transmission oils, ratio right, things like that, waterproof grease, brake fluid, you name it, it's in there, dirt bike related. Moving on from there, I was able to get my entire eight foot long stainless table into the trailer. I think I spent at least $300 on this table, maybe more. It was like a scratch and dent item and it was about half price as it would have been. So there was no way I was giving this up, especially in the shop working with oil. It's really nice to have something you can clean up easy, hit it with some brake cleaner, get the dirt and oil off of it, even take Take photos on it. It has a really great reflective surface as a base. So there was no compromise on this. I needed to have my eight foot table. I was not downsizing and with a little proper layout, it was very easy to make fit. Right now, this table currently houses a full engine shipping crate down below, five gallon dunk tank full of simple grain for when I need to rinse things off. I got a set of tires under here, an entire two foot by three foot enclosure that I use for lye baths to soak swing arms in and remove anodizing. There's even a generator under there right now. So 
I literally have this thing loaded down. It all fits. Nothing's in the way. Up top, of course, we've got our vise and plenty of room left over for the engine stand. So super pumped I was able to get my entire table in here. Up above the table, I have a really nice seven foot stainless shelf. It matches the table really well. I keep all the paper towels up there, all the brake clean, all the stuff I need to grab quickly when I'm cleaning something, my gloves, a little chemical overflow, my SC1 so I can shine bikes up real quick if I need to. So that thing is great. It keeps everything at an arm's reach away, but it's also out of the way. And another really cool thing about it is it's not that deep, which is actually important in the trailer because of the lighting. If the shelf were deep, it would probably block some of the lighting and create a shadow down below on the table. So that was really important. We'll get into the lighting in a little bit. Moving on from there, we have my gigantic vapor blasting cabinet. Now this sucker is three foot by four foot, and that does not include the edges that have drip rails on them. So this is a very large piece of equipment, very tall piece of equipment. While we're on the subject of height and the super tall blast cabinet, the roof in here, the lowest point I can touch in the center at the crown is seven foot six. So this sucker is really tall. Plenty of room to hang deep lights if you want. I chose really shallow ones. I even have a couple of GoPro mounts on the ceiling that face down at the projects I'm working on. So height wise, we have no issues whatsoever. Of course, the vapor blasting cabinet is absolutely essential to bike building these days. It takes really nasty stuff and makes really pretty stuff. So this is one of my favorite tools in the arsenal. Did a quick sample for you guys just so you could see why the hell I keep this $8,000 piece of equipment around. The Vapor Blaster is an amazing tool. This particular one is made by Raptor Blaster. And what it does is actually it takes parts and polishes them. So aluminum parts come out looking really good once you figure out your blast PSIs, your blast media, all that sort of stuff. There's actually a ton of technique and pressures and specs involved to make stuff look like this. It's not too hard, but it does take some practice. And needless to say, it's a lifetime tool. I don't see it rotting out anytime soon. It's really easy to clean and the way it's situated in the trailer allows me to access both doors if I need to drain the cabinet really easily when things get dirty and the cabinet itself is actually made out of stainless steel so the thing's not going to rust out that about wraps up the passenger side of the trailer at the end of the blast cabinet I have my man door where I come in and out wipe my feet keep things clean people are funny they try to come up the back ramp and the trailer is out on a dirt lot right now and I yell at them and they're like what there's a ramp right here so I can come in I'm like no nah, I don't think so you go wipe your gut feet. So upon entry and just to the right of the man door, I have my second blast cabinet. Now this is a dry blasting cabinet. This is something I have loaded full of aluminum oxide. The vapor blaster I didn't mention has glass bead in it since they are round and they polish. But the aluminum oxide in the dry blast cabinet is super, super aggressive. It will take paint off in like a millisecond. So I use the dry blast cabinet with the aluminum oxide to descale all the really ratty stuff before I put it into the vapor blaster. You could put it into the vapor blaster, but two things would go wrong. You would just contaminate the cabinet with oil and dirt and debris, which would wear your media out faster. And also glass beads don't really cut quickly since they are a polishing media. So for example, when this sucker here looked like this sucker here, I went ahead and took this guy. I threw it in the dry blast cabinet first, hit it with the aluminum oxide. Then you go ahead and use your air compressor and you blast out all the media that might be stuck in here, the aluminum oxide, because we don't want it to go in the vapor blasting cabinet. I'll end up with a nice clean and raw aluminum surface from the dry blast cabinet that makes the vapor blasting step extra easy and you just get this crazy shine out of it. So you don't necessarily need both cabinets, but if you're trying to level your game up, like I certainly am always trying to do, then these two cabinets to me are just essential. The dry blast cabinet also has a little vacuum on the side of it between the cabinet you see back there and the compressor next to it down in that little crack over there. There's a little vacuum that keeps visibility up inside the dry blast cabinet when you're making a bunch of dust. So that's actually something else I was able to pre-plan and kind of squeeze into that dead spot back there. Speaking of blast cabinets, you of course need an air compressor to get the job done in either cabinet. You guys may have noticed my air compressor is pretty dang big. There are a couple things you need to know about air compressors if you're trying to buy one. First of all, you really need to make sure before you spend $2,000 that your air compressor CFM is is up to the task that your tool requires. So for example, if you have a tool like the Vapor Blaster or maybe a handheld impact or cutoff wheel, something like that, that demands a certain amount of CFM to be run constantly, you're gonna wanna make sure the compressor offers a little bit more. And the reason is 
You don't want the compressor just running endlessly or kicking on and off over and over and over. You want that tool to last a really long time, so you need to make sure you get an air compressor that's large enough to power your tools sustainably without continuously running and burning itself out. In my case, the Vapor Blaster does, of course, use air, but the way you get that beautiful shine in the Vapor Blasting cabinet is not with high pressure, so you don't actually need a big-ass compressor like that if you're just using a Vapor Blaster. The sweet spot for those is about 30 PSI and below, but what you do need to giant compressor like mine for is the dry blast cabinet. I want to say the specs on that dry blast cabinet are 17 or 18 CFM at 90 PSI and that is what you need in order to sustain blasting without the compressor running all the time. If anybody needs the specs on the compressor I would be happy to give them just ask in the comments below but in my case the compressor is large enough to sustainably run any tool I have in here including of course the dry blast cabinet. The other thing you need to know about compressors is the type of power it needs. So you may have heard of things like 120, 208, 480, 220, what does it all mean? Well, the most important thing is if you are at a house, meaning not a commercial area, you will need a compressor that uses a single phase motor. All that really means is the power source has two legs, for whatever reason they call two legs single phase, and in commercial applications they actually have three legs, ABC, that is called three phase. So you don't want to accidentally buy a three phase commercial compressor motor if you are working out of your house. And for reference, all house and residential areas are single phase so you guys may have noticed I don't have any loose airlines or crazy water pipes running through the trailer and that is because it is all plumbed below the trailer in the case of the air compressor and the two blast cabinets I have the air compressor plumbed in such a way that the outgoing air goes right out down through the floor hits a T and then tees back up through the bottom of the floor into each cabinet that way there's no mess nothing to trip over keeping everything really decluttered in here and that's actually the same for the electrical that panel you see back there all of the wiring is in the wall you can catch all of that how to rough an electrical how to put the boxes in what I use that's all in episode 3 so again the air the water needed for the vapor blasting cabinet and the electricity all hidden all tucked away of course that takes a little extra time but there are no extension cords running around in here if I'm at the computer I have a charging station if I'm at the stainless table I have two bench top receptacles of course there is electricity up high for the vapor blaster electricity outlet for the air compressor electricity for the dry blast and I even have a charging station cut into the back of the tool chest so I can charge all my batteries my camera my phone my music speaker whatever it may be and so now they're all wrapped up with the air compressor and we're making our way around the room here that lands us at the big husky cabinet now this thing has been great for overflow this cabinet holds all of my overflow tools it holds all my distilled waters chemicals acetone zinc plating baths chromates for dyeing different steels I can put my light stands away the ones I use to film with which I actually forgot to set up and I'm not using right now so hopefully everything Thing looks good when you guys are watching this but pretty much anything loose I can always stow it away in that cabinet if I need to hook the trailer up to the truck and go somewhere which is rare and probably is never going to happen unless we move I can stow everything away in the cabinet I can lock it up and nothing will be bouncing around if we were to be driving down the interstate or something if you guys are enjoying this video so far don't forget to smash the like button don't forget to subscribe I would appreciate the hell out of that you guys are the ones that have been making this channel grow and I cannot thank you enough moving on from the cabinet we are going into my desk it's just another little low boy husky table with a little butcher block top it was perfect for the computer so I'm actually able to check my emails go ahead and take the memory card out of this camera throw it into the computer check the sound make sure everything's okay make sure the camera's working properly whatever it may be get into my checklist for bike builds it's just perfect so I can either use the chair I'm sitting in there or I can stand up and stretch my legs a little bit and whack the keys and the rest of this cabinet just houses things like all of my bolt motorcycle hardware pro packs engine bolts fastener kits all my cameras camera equipment is in there, paper, pens, notepads, whatever it may be, all that stuff fits in there no problem and I have room left over. Moving down the line we have the tool stack itself. You guys probably noticed everything in here matches. It's a real cool dark black series that Husky came out with a couple years ago. I actually don't think they sell it anymore. All the handles on the big cabinet, the little cabinet, the desk, the tool stack, they all match. They're all silver and of course that thing has all of my batteries charging in it. My little music speaker, my little phone charging station, all my safety glasses, Glasses, ear protection, power coating plugs, mighty vac for bleeding brakes, all the wrenches, tools, torches, shipping scale, 
extra nuts and bolts, fork sill drivers, shop manuals, it's all in there. One of the great things about that side of the trailer is that the large cabinet, the desk, and the tool stack, they are all the same depth. So when they're on the wall, they're all flush all the way down with each other. Looks really clean. And if you're wondering how I did that, because of course it's a trailer and there is a wheel well there, all I did was measure the depth of the wheel well and then get some 2 by 10 planks, build a box around the wheel well that came out just flush with the front of the tool stack and the desk. And then I just sat everything right on top of that edge. FRP'd the front when I was done, came out super clean. Another really important thing about building this trailer was weight distribution. I didn't want to have too much stuff over here that's heavy. I didn't want to have too much stuff over here that's heavy. I didn't want the trailer to be lopsided. So that's exactly why it's laid out the way it's laid out. Just based off different tool specs as I went, I tried to get a beat on what this weighed, like the vapor blasting cabinet. How much does it weigh with water? Water's eight pounds per gallon. This thing holds a ton of water. And so the way you guys see the trailer laid out is really close to an even weight distribution. And on that topic, this is actually a car trailer. So adding everything up, it's right about what a vehicle would be. So we're not overweight. We're not putting too much stress on the tires where you end up popping them out in the middle of the desert when it gets too hot. I've been there before, that sucks. And really I just tried to take into account all the details like that that would make something harder in my life. So cleanliness, usefulness, the flow of the space, weight distribution, all those things were a consideration in this trailer build. And as we've pretty much made our way all the way around the trailer, that leaves us with the little AC unit. Of course, there's a receptacle for that sucker too. And that thing has kept the trailer really, really cool this summer. I've worked in the trailer primarily through the heat of the summer. Doors wide open, nice breeze passes through. AC keeps a nice blast of cool air running through here. If it gets cold in the winter, I'll be able to put one of those tiny electric space heaters in here. I think that would be just perfect, maybe even too hot. We're in California, so things are pretty mild, but it does get really hot in the summer. It's been about 100 degrees here lately. And really all that's left to talk about is that tail end of the trailer where it dovetails down into the ramp. I just have a ton of extra space, so I will usually keep my photo lights against the wall over there if I'm too lazy to put them away, which is pretty often. I've also got my tool bucket over there. It's a little bucket full of moto tools that's specific to things I would need if I was out riding, so I bring it from the moto van back into the trailer every weekend when I'm done writing that kind of hangs out over there I could totally put another small rack and put more things on that engine pieces stuff taken apart whatever it may be that actually also goes double for the top of the cabinet and the top of the blaster over here there's room up top for the swing arms that are currently there there's just tons of space and tons of utility in this thing and I really am pumped on the way it turned out there are actually two tools that I wish I had in here but I probably will not install one of them would be a wheel a buffing wheel it would just make too much dust so I'm gonna go ahead and set one of those up outside on a stand that should be good enough hop outside make a huge mess keep all the dust away from the bike builds which actually I didn't mention there's a full-size motorcycle in here so so plenty of room to do your building in here obviously that's no problem I can get around the bike I can open all my tool drawers it makes for awesome photos the hell was I talking about oh yeah the two things I wish I wanted so a buffing wheel and then I also had a bearing press like a nice little bearing press stand I didn't think it was gonna fit in here but it actually would have gone perfectly underneath the small cabinet if I would have just hacked the legs down a little bit. So I'm a little bit bummed that I didn't keep that. There are of course tons of ways to get it done and there isn't really any problem with the space savings by not having it. We do have the vise. We can press bearings in that way. I have a blind bearing puller in the tool stack so we can also remove bearings that way. So even though those two things aren't here, we still have all the bases covered. Man, what else could I tell you guys about this thing? Uh... Oh yeah, we need to talk about the lights. So the lighting, I ended up finding at Home Depot maybe $20, $30 per light. I ended up with eight strip fixtures, super shallow. They're 4,000K, which is kind of like daylight. I wanted 5,000K, which is kind of like jewelry store lighting, which is what we had in the old shop. That pays huge dividends for filming and also the look of some of the vapor blasting stuff I showed you. The lighting really makes it pop. Imagine being in a jewelry store at the mall or something like that and all the sparkly stuff in the cabinets. It's kind of like that. But the price was right and they actually all plugged into one another all the way down. So that saved me from running a bunch of wires or putting in conduit because one light daisy chains off the next. Now I mounted those on something called strut. I got 20 foot shots of super strut. Strut comes in two different depths. You have inch and five eighths and then you have seven eighths. So I went with the seven eighths and the reason I did that was to keep everything low profile just like the lights. And you're also able 
able to utilize the strut as a raceway for the wire as each light plugs into the next. They actually make a really cool cap, kind of like the trim plate on the plug that hides all the crap around the plug. This thing snaps into the strut and it hides the wiring. So again, everything looks really clean. You don't see wires hanging out everywhere. We have the lighting actually plugged into the panel at the far end and then all the lights connect to each other from there. All the wiring is hidden inside the strut with a cover on the strut and everything just looks cherry. On the topic of power, if you guys are trying to power something up like this, go ahead and grab yourself a cheap ass 100 amp panel from Home Depot. I think that thing was like 20 or 30 bucks. It doesn't include the breakers, but it is the perfect size for something small like this that only has a couple circuits, I think up to six, and you could probably double that if you went to the double paddle breakers. Of course, don't ever overload your electrical system because you will either have nuisance tripping or start a fire and that is a stupid thing. So regarding the 100 amps, that's just how they identify the panel when you go to buy it. I am not powering the trailer with a 100 amp service. That is very typical of an entire house back in the day. So you don't need 100 amps to power this thing. It's actually running off a two pole 50. So I actually have a 50 amp service and an appropriately sized 50 amp cord feeding the panel that goes right out the bottom of the trailer floor and that allows me to plug into shore power just about anywhere with the space in the panel I need to plug into. And for the record, I am just some asshole on YouTube. Don't take advice from me. I'm not telling you how to wire anything. <laughs> I'm not telling you how to plumb your air. I'm not trying to tell you how to kill yourself on accident. For demonstration purposes only. Or whatever people say in YouTube videos when they don't want to be liable for you blowing your hands off. So what's really cool about that is, again, wherever I go, as long as I can find power and water, I can fire this sucker up. I can run at full capacity. And I just think that is so cool. So guys, I think that pretty much wraps up the trailer build. If you have any other questions for me, go ahead and ask. We've gone all the way around. We've talked about the lights. We've covered the floor, the walls, and all that stuff in episodes two and three. Again, if you have any specific questions, don't be shy. That's what these YouTube videos are all about. Go ahead and blast me in the comments below. I'm glad I finally got to do this video. I'm in a dead spot with T1000. T1000 is our 2003 CR250 build for Dirt Bike Magazine if you are new to the channel. So if you like dirt bikes, go ahead and subscribe. Check out older videos. I do a ton of bike building. That's actually the primary purpose of this shop. So that little dead spot in the T1000 build actually ended up being the perfect opportunity for me to dust this thing down, clean it up a little bit, make it feel feel good again and go ahead and film this shop tour. For my OGs, thanks for watching guys. If you're new, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Either way, I appreciate all of you. You guys know I love spending time with you here on YouTube. So keep kicking ass and I will see you really soon.